Hello there, welcome to the Genesis Model Show April 2013 and my name's Bobby Waldron and for this show for April what we've got coming up is we're going to be looking at um, weathering up an armoured vehicle tutorial, um, a nice quick basic boom 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 going through all the different layers of weathering at a professional level. Right, We're going to be having a look at some clips from the F14 uh, Tomcat by Hobby Boss 1 in 48 scale step by step video build. We're going to have a product review on some um, P cutters, some scribers by Tamiya and RB Productions. We're also going to have another look at a, another video build that's going on at the moment, which is the P51D Mustang, a rapid video build, also one in 48 scale. And we're also going to have another part of weathering up an armoured vehicle tutorial. Um, not only that, we've got our usual um, competition announcement for last month, for March, which was for um, this nice F4 Phantom behind me. And we're also going to go off and well basically we're going to have another competition for April um, and that one I'll, um, you'll have to wait to see what that is um, but basically to start off with you probably just noticed that I've changed the name of this um, show it was the Genesis Models news feed but um, news feed I didn't kind of quite like that so I've changed it to the Genesis Models show because it's more of a show of kind of showing you product reviews inbox reviews and um, you know kind of just having a bit of a show for you really rather than you know some sort of news round at 10 sort of thing going on um, the other thing is as well I just want to kind of show you something um, <clears throat> did quite a bit of shopping and brought quite a bit of stuff this month um, but in this box here what I've got is the entire range of the Humbrol enamels 14mm um, box. Let's put this down, one second and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a nice new shelf for that and we can kind of put all them up but what I'm basically kind of showing you is that um, Although I prefer acrylic paints, um, not all of you do. I mean, there's quite a few of you on the forum who have been saying you prefer enamel paints, and you know, it's a, it's a good point. I mean, it's my job to kind of show you everything and every, anything and not kind of just go, well, I like acrylic paints, so I'm going to stick with teaching you acrylic paints. Um, so that's why I've gone off and brought the entire enamel range so I can actually start using, getting used to, and hopefully in the next couple of months start showing you how to use enamel paints so that way everybody can be happy with um, kind of showing you the different different styles of paints plus there's a few cool things that you can do with enamel paints as well that you can't do with acrylics so well um, another thing I've got some more lighting as well so hopefully this is looking a bit nicer and brighter as well as the videos are looking a bit nicer brighter and better uh, kind of quality on the lighting um, but also I mean this is just a little sneak peek for maybe the May um, Genesis Models news uh, sorry not news so the Genesis model show is um, I've brought some vintage airbrushes so we might have a little bit of a quick clip on you know the history of airbrushes and um, that kind of stuff because I've managed to pick one up from 1930 so it, that might be a bit interesting for some of you to have a look at um, so apart from that um, what I want to do now is I want to you know crack on with showing you the a tutorial on weathering armoured vehicles um, plain and simply it's a nice quick one it's there's there's more to it than I'm gonna than I'm showing you but it's a bit more fast paced to kind of get you through all the different layers of weathering so let's have a look at this tutorial we're doing now so to get started um, with this nice tutorial we're gonna start with filters now um, you probably have all heard of um, washes um, like this MIG Productions um, dark wash um, and what this is is simply you highlight all the details with a wash a filter on the other hand is plain and simply a thinner version of a wash and what a filter is is it's it's supposed to change the tones of the actual um, base color of our armored vehicle so let's just get started and let's get cracking on um, now we've got this Arietta tank here as well a, an Italian C1 um, and just a quick kind of note that I, you might be interested in I got this off eBay for about 20-30 pounds uh, built sprayed 
and painted absolute bargain um, if you want to do um, just weathering concentrate just on weathering and skip all that time building spraying deckling you know absolute bargain this is a decently sprayed built and deckled model for 20 30 pounds this way I can concentrate on plain and simply um, getting this model weathered up um, and having a good practice at doing professional weathering so let's crack on with the filter let's take our uh, turret off first so we can um, play around with a much more flatter surface to show you this now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, uh, MIG Productions um, brown for dark green um, nice kind of brownish sort of colour and what we're going to simply do, we give it a shake and we want to make sure all the, the um, on the bottom has all gone and has all been shaken up right? because that's where all the um, paint is basically, the enamel paint um, the other thing is as well, make sure that you have either sprayed the base coat with um, actual um, acrylic paints um, because if you do use say enamel paints you're gonna have to come along and put some sort of protective coat on um, this was actually enamel paint so I came along and I put a, um, a Windsor & Newton matte UV varnish on top this way we protect our enamel coat from our enamel based filters so what you plan to simply do it's a really easy easy um, technique is you give it a good shake you don't need to do any mixing or anything just simply get it on the end of a brush and we simply brush on our filter like so now what we've got to remember with filters is they're not a wash right so we don't want it to go into all our nooks and crannies in pools um, to kind of highlight all our different nooks and crannies like you would a wash we want to put a nice filmed surface all over the model pretty much nice and equal like I'm doing here you want to spread it out, you don't want it, let's bring you in a little closer, you don't want it pulling up, you don't want it going into all the nooks and crannies and highlighting them all because that's not what we're doing here, we're just giving the whole surface a nice even coat all over, we're spreading it all out all nicely and we're just getting it all nice and even um, nice flat, a nice film, a nice filter of um, our filter all over. Uh, and what's going to happen is this is going to dry down and it's going to be a nice subtle light change in the tone. Right, so the first coat you're probably going to look at it and you're probably going to be that's not really done anything but you apply a second and possibly a third maybe even a fourth and what it will do is it will give you this real nice um, all-round general change of the tones and giving you a more realistic look to the whole kind of paintwork so I'm just gonna now go off and do the same thing all over the model to get it um, all done but a quick note before we carry on is when doing like say um, 90 degree angles right what we need to do is make sure about stuff like where it kind of um, gravity is going to take your wash down right and it's going to pull up at the bottom again remember with filters we don't want it pooling we don't want it acting as a wash we want it nice and even all round so just spread it out along our um, side of our tank here right so we've got no bot pooling up at the bottom as you saw I'll show you again you put a bit on the end of your brush and see it just pulls right down you don't want that you want to suck that up spread it about and make it all nice and even right like so and it's as simple as that with a filter
I hope you enjoyed watching filters um, for doing this Italian MBT. Um, as you probably could see, it wasn't a massive kind of different to the difference to the paintwork. This is all about um, well, weathering. Um, armoured vehicles is all about building up the layers, the different techniques and bringing them together to then make a whole difference, right? So filters, it just makes a light difference. We're going to do some um, pin washing later, so that's going to then make a difference. And then, um, you know, the more little clips of the different layers and the different techniques will build this up into... Um, well, a bigger picture, shall we say. Um, so keep tuned for the next layer at the end of this show, which will be the pin washes. Um, and to kind of make a note as well, the whole point of this video is as well, is that, well, plain and simply, Genesis Models is a lot of kind of aircraft at the moment, modern jets, World War II, um, that kind of like building of modeling. Armoured vehicles is a bit more of a different art form because you, you go off and you do all that kind of weathering stuff using your enamel washes and filters and oils and your pigments and stuff. Um, and this is all kind of getting in preparation for an actual professional um, armoured vehicle step-by-step -step video build which is coming up soon. But we'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, Apart from that, um, what we what I built last month, well I built the um, F14A Tomcat 148 scale by Hazagewi and I'm also in the process of doing a step by step video build of the Hobby Boss F14 Tomcat 148 scale. Now, um, I have been kind of going on a bit about which is the best kit and everything. I think I can kind of safely say now after building the Hazagoe and I'm pretty much through the Hobby Boss enough to kind of say both kits are pretty much the same to be honest. I mean there are a few little issues with one, a few little issues with the other but I mean when you kind of generalize it um, really I mean they are both pretty damn good kits. I mean they're both built together pretty damn well. The details pretty damn good. I mean you won't uh, be unhappy with either kit you get the only thing about these two kits is the price Hazagoe totally and utterly kills their kit and that is that is the big downfall to the Hazagoe kit is it's expensive and you have to go off and buy weapons hobby boss you get all your weapons and it's cheaper um, so you know it's really recommended that you go off and get a hobby boss kit because it is it's the same sort of quality really as the Hazagoe and I think it might be just a bit better in quality than the Hazagoe but only like by a bit but you know the price just says it all so um, for £50 hobby boss 1 in 48 uh, scale F14 Tomcat you can't go wrong so you know that is that but to kind of like um, show you what's going on in the um, hobby boss step by step video build of the F14 Tomcat let's have a little look at a little clip from episode 4 of uh, the step by step video build of the 1 in 48 scale Tomcat Right, it's time to start doing our wings now. Um, now I've done some test fitting and I've already done uh, the one wing and we've got a few problems to have a look at. Now, um, if you decide to have your wing in the open position and have your flaps down and slats open, this part is gonna be um, easier. However, I want my wings in the closed position, um, so basically my flaps, and, uh, my flaps need to be up and my slats need to be closed. So that's gonna create a few little problems because um, with most um, things in modeling, if the designers make it so it's um, to be in the open position, when you come to close it, it doesn't quite close that well and that's what happens with our flaps here so um, what we've the problem is is that when you do actually come along and close your flaps um, you get like a nasty little step just here which um, is going to look a little bit naff um, if you just glue that in straight away um, just like that um, we've got an option well one option we could sand away at the back of our um, slat here um, to basically thin it down so as that we can get rid of this step. 
However, I mean, we're talking, I mean, it's quite thin already. I don't know how well you can see that, but this is already quite thin, this plastic. And if we start sanding away at this, um, I think we're gonna get a little bit too fine. So another option, what we can do, and it's the option what I'm gonna do, and I think in some ways, um, I can also show you a few things. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna get ourselves a micro saw, and we're gonna start cutting our, cell, cutting our way into, um, the actual wing itself and I'm just cutting um, the sides first All right let's try and get that nice and we're just sawing nicely into it and we don't want to be going off and sawing any more than actually what I probably should have done just to show you a bit better uh, nice little um, red pen here and we'll just mark Right, what exactly we're cutting away. So hopefully you can see red pen line, which is also a good idea for a lot of kind of um, scratch building where you actually cut away something. It's just to um, put a nice red line just so you can see nice and clearly what it is that needs to be removed and actually what doesn't need to be removed. So again, I'm just sawing at this end like so. And hopefully, as you can see, I've sawed this end and this end, and we've got to go along here. Now, going along here is a little bit more harder and trickier. So, um, tell me a pea cutter, right? And we can just nicely set this along a nice first light drag along our slat area here. And then we've just put ourselves a nice little trench in. And what we can do is just keep on going along like so, removing this plastic, making our trench bigger and bigger until we've cut all the way through. then hopefully as you can see um, I've just dragged my pea cutter along there and kept on doing it until we're pretty much all the way through and what basically is now we've cut enough the way through that we can actually give this now you shouldn't be um, bending this so to the point where you're really putting some force it should be able to just nicely bend on its own like so and we can just keep on um, twisting it like this and hopefully we're gonna come free. There we go. And we've just removed the piece that we don't want. Okay, so um, we wanna just tidy this up now. So um, we could come in with our blade, cause all these areas here where we've kind of cut at it are not quite, you know, right up and um, nice and neat. All right, so I'm just, giving this a nice little chop, especially in the corners. It's the corners where this is gonna be, um, needs to be nice and all good. So I'm just using a blade and I'm just scraping at it. I'm going to this corner, getting this nicely cut in and nice, and then we can quickly come along with a coarse sanding stick. And we can just quickly get rid of this little bit of a uh, mess just here, right? Like so. Right then, and what hopefully should be the case now is when we come along with our slat here, is it should be a really nice fit, right? And it is, right? But what we need to do now is we need to get this glued on 
so that we've got uh, no step or anything like that, right? So what we could do, well, what I did with the last one anyway, um, was I've got some Tamiya masking tape, and we'll just start up the top here, and I'm just going to get it so that this Tamiya masking tape just holds it just enough perfectly in position like so there was a nice bit of scratch building going on there with that f14 i um i hope you kind of enjoyed that because um you know it is such a pain when if something's designed to be open on a kit you try and close it and it never quite fits as perfect as you want it to and um, by following that little bit of a uh, procedure there <coughs> you could get that uh, nice slat all nice and perfect which um, it really does actually look really nice now there's a bit more to follow on from that in the actual video where you kind of scribe it up and stuff and just give it a little light sanding down um, but you know if you want to watch that it's over there on the website um, you do have to be a paying member to like um, view all those videos um, but hopefully you You'll enjoy it if you watch it. Um, so just to kind of talk about the whole video releasing, um, remember each and every week on the Friday I'll release um, a, a video, uh, an episode from one of the video builds that are going on at that time and the finally the Spitfire video episode 11 was finally released last Friday so all them videos are up there to view for all time um, whenever you feel like it and now the F14 uh, video, step by step video build uh, by Hobby Boss is now taking over that weekly release. So you can start watching all them from episode 4 onwards. We're going to be kind of releasing them weekly. So they're going to be released, and also we've got another video build that's going to be starting. I'll talk about that more, which that'll kind of be released on a fortnightly. So you know, we've got you know some nice bonus, a nice bonus video there coming along as well so we're coming along to the, the whole competition side of thing last month we um, sorted out a competition to win this prize the Academy 1 in 48 scale F4B uh, now this looks like a cracking kit and I wouldn't mind giving it a go um, you know and it looks like the best kit you can get in this scale because let's face it has a gateway raised panel lines you know <coughs> This is the one you're going to want to get. So, who is the winner of this competition prize, which was sponsored by uh, Boys Town Military Miniatures, by the way? And um, I did a random number generation on the forum, and it turns out that Brummy Dan 23 is the winner of the March. 2013 competition for this prize right here. So uh, congratulations to you, Brummy Dan. I will um, send you an email asking you for your um, um, mailing address so I can ship this out to you free of charge. And I hope you enjoy that. And hopefully you'll throw up some pictures of some maybe final reveals of how you got on with this kit and um, maybe give us a little bit of info on how it went together and stuff because I'd, I'd like to know um, how that goes together so that is um, this month that was last month's competition so this month's competition what is the competition prize well I'm gonna show you a video before we um, before I announce that and the next video coming up is we're gonna have a bit of a product review so What's the product review? Well, um, plain and simply, I use the Tamiya P cutter uh, for most of my scribing. Um, and then Pete, uh, our admin um, provenance, he introduced me to this, um, the R scribe, is it called? Um, yeah, it's called the Scribe R by RB Productions, and I've got this from Sprumark. Um, .co.uk and you know it's quite interesting how good this photo this is just a bit of photo etch this term um, P cutter so let's have a look at a video on actually how good these two P cutters are and you know maybe who's the best or combined or whatever let's 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 have a look and what I'm going to do here is give you a uh, product review of RB Productions um, P cutter and Tamiya's uh, P cutter as well. I wanted to do them both together because um, they really do um, complement each other quite well. Um, I've also got a trumpeter one here which I'll talk about and I've got myself a little template here for um, 
subscribing. And I've got myself a bit of some spares and repairs of a Hobby Boss 148 scale F14 Tomcat. Now, um, what we're going to do is going to start looking at the Tamiya because I think this is the more well known pea cutter out there. Um, it's around about the six, seven pound mark ish, I think. Um, and plain and simply, we've got ourselves a nice little storage area for some um, spare um, pea cutters. And you can basically tighten this off, unscrew this here, and we can then kind of like pull out our pea cutter. All right, so um, it's quite a nice design. Um, it is a bit um, sort of bulkier than say the RB Productions um, Scriber um, but I do find this is a very kind of nice and sturdy um, pea cutter especially for like doing things like freehand now what we've got here is I've got a pea cutter uh, sorry a, a template and all I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an, a, a, um, a scribing line and we're just going to see how good it is now when you scribe you want to start off nice and light just to get your first cut right and you just keep on going nice and light okay until you get yourself a nice recess panel line right and what you're looking for really is all this um, curly plastic stuff going on that you can just see here right that's the stuff you want because that is removing the plastic right um, unlike say our trumpeter one here that doesn't really kind of curl it out I don't know if we can get you in a bit closer um, a bit more there we go our trumpeter one here it doesn't really kind of curl it out it seems to leave a rough surface behind um, which is not what you want because um, well it kind of makes it raised a little bit um, this here that the um, trumpeter just did this recess panel line this has left a real nice recess panel line um, as you can see now I probably could enhance that a little bit more here we go I've got some uh, pigments here I'll just quickly rub on some pigments because this way you can actually see a lot easier okay so little pigments on the end of a little brush here and hopefully you can see what I mean a little bit more easier right, you can just see there um, the panel line a lot easier and you can see what the trumpeter did it just looks nasty whereas the um, Tamiya one as you can see looks like a really nice kind of um, recessed panel line so moving along and we're going to show you over the other side our um, RB Productions one so again um, we put our template down like so and we're just going to give ourselves a nice pull back a nice light pull back and the one thing is I like about this um, pea cutter is it really does cut in really nice and gives you I think an even finer line than our um, Tamiya pea cutter so if we get in with a, another little bit of um, pigments and hopefully you can see let's just brush this off okay and hopefully as you can see you've got a nice recess panel line there from our um, uh, RB Productions and I do think that it just gives you a bit more of a nice that finer sort of crisper recess panel line than our Tamiya um, however as fine as this one is which is just basically photo etch um, I do find it's a little bit too fine and when it comes around to doing freehand which I normally like to do um, it is a little bit kind of shall we say tricky it does kind of just sort of like slips here and there you can't get it quite straight I'm trying to do freehand here and it just doesn't seem to give us that nice straight line that say if we come along with Tamiya it just feels a lot more sturdier and I can get a lot more straighter going freehand with a Tamiya so let's just brush on a bit more pigments here just to show you what I mean this little line here that I've done they're both freehand 
All right, let's see. Hopefully, as you can see there, the top one there is our um, RB Productions, which is a little bit, you know, wiggly. And then our Tamiya, it just feels like you can have, you've got more control, you can go more freehand with it and get a lot more straighter with the Tamiya. Um, so that's a nice little advantage with the Tamiya. But then the other thing is as well, um, if I can just kind of show you on something, if I can get my hands on, here, here we go. We'll, we'll use this scrap piece of card, right? Um, let's just imagine that this is a F4 Phantom. And do you know where you've got the wing section and then you've literally got, when it hits the um, fuselage section, it literally goes into a 90 degree angle. So when you're trying to get in there, with your Tamiya P cutter, right, into those corners, right? Your Tamiya P cutter is getting this far. I'm just gonna do a nice cut here, right? And then your RB Productions, right, is getting right in there. Hopefully, as you can see here. All right, so let's get some uh, now I know this is all looking messy and everything, but hopefully as you can see, the card was up against there. Our RB Productions um, P cutter has got right into that 90 degree angle, whereas our Tamiya P cutter um, just missed it by like a couple of mil, which is a bit of a pain because then it leaves those areas looking a bit messy. And what I used to do in the past, I used to use the trumpeter to actually get in there and um, kind of finish that off, but the trumpeter, fr frankly, is a bit of a crap peak cutter. Um, so, as you can see, um, both P cutters seem to have advantages and disadvantages. Um, another advantage that our um, RB production has is when going round corners, it's got this little saw actually on the back. So um, what you'd probably, what you could do, I mean, yes, you could come along with a template and say we could rescribe in this area here and try and bend it over, but I mean, we've virtually got a 90 degree angle here. I mean, if we bent that right over, I mean, as much as this um, uh, stencil, uh, our template here can bend, going 90 degrees, we're going to actually properly bend it. Um, so I, in the past, would use something like a, um, a saw, a micro saw, and we could just nicely saw around these little 90 degree angles and get a nice straight line, like so. However, the um, RB Productions has one of these little micro saws on the back. So you can actually do the same thing with RB Productions, like so. And then what I'd probably do is, because I've just made a bit of a recess using the saw on the back of a RB Productions um, P cutter, I could then come along with my Tamiya um, P cutter, which as I say is a lot more kind of sturdier going freehand, and we could just follow that around and give ourselves a nice recessed panel line going around a 90 degree angle like that. Right, so hopefully as you can see um, from this quick um, slapping on of just let's do some recessed panel lines and all this kind of stuff, um, hopefully you can see that one, Trumpeter is rubbish, don't buy it, okay? Tamiya is a good sort of uh, nice um, general kind of um, pea cutter in which, you know, it's, it's good at doing um, template um, panel lines, it's good um, for going freehand um, and it just feels sturdier and it feels like you've got more control um, but if you kind of combine that by both of these products um, the RB Productions gives you that kind of nicer finer line like a Tamiya, uh, sorry, a, a sort of like a Hazagawi kind of panel lines, really kind of fine, nice and crisp um, but you can't really go freehand as well as Tamiya, but as I say, you get a much more finer, nicer line. Um, but on the upside, it's like you can get into there with those 90 degree angles. You can then use the back saw part to kind of saw the 90 degree, uh, 90 degree angles as well. Um, and also, I mean, it's good for, uh, it's 
when you use templates like say um, this and you want to do um, say like a square it's a lot easier with the RB productions than it is with the Tamiya to kind of do these squares in your templates like so um, so combined and you use both of them at the same time and you kind of mix and match for whatever area of scribing you do it really will improve your scribing by going for both of these products um, rather than just going for the one so that is my recommendation um, they're good on their own but they are better together um, I hope you enjoyed that because I really do like um, this new pea cutter by RB Productions I'm using now. It really does complement the Tamiya pea cutter really nice. I mean, definitely recommended to get both of these because they just complement each other so nicely. So, um, as you probably may be waiting for, is the April 2013 competition. And for this month's competition, we have. <coughs> let's get it the right way. We have Revell's 1 in 30 second scale HE219A7. Looks like a cracking kit, massive kit, 60 centimeters across. I've had a little look inside and it does look really nice. I'd have loved to have done you an inbox review to go with this uh, Genesis model show, but sadly just didn't have the time. So what I'll do is I'll still do an inbox review of this, but I'll throw it out there as a solo video um, just of doing an inbox review of this kit. So if you want to know about this kit, I will be throwing it up um, sometime in the future. So this kit was donated by um, um, modelhobbies.co.uk. So thanks for you guys for donating this. Um, it, it is actually a good site, uh, modelhobbies.co.uk, because um, I find that um, to measure an online store on how good they are is if you have a problem with them. Because, um, you know, places like eBay and stuff, if you have a problem, um, what's going to happen? I mean, you're going to find out how bad they are or how good they are. Um, <clears throat> and you can measure a good online store by how well they help you with your problem. And I had a problem a couple of years back with modelhobbies.co.uk um, and they did go out their way to, you know, basically try and make sure that I was okay with my problem and we got it all sorted. And in the end, it ended up just being the raw mail's fault. But the fact that they were emailing me back, you know, not like some online stores can where you know it takes you forever to kind of get an email response and they're very reluctant to do any kind of refunds or anything like that um, but modelhobbies.co.uk I mean they did help me out with that so that was a good measure of a good online store and here they are now actually giving a donation a free kit away for you guys to win as a competition prize so uh, thanks for you guys for doing that so if you want to win this kit What's going to happen is there's going to be a thread on the forum called something like um, Competition April 2013, something like that. And all you've got to do is simply make a post in there saying something like, I'm in, count me in, um, you know, something to that effect that basically just says you're in, you've made a post and, you know, you're entered. And I can do a random number generation um, <clears throat> next month for May and see who actually wins this um, HE219. Um, now, to be a member on the forum, it's free. Just register like you would any other forum for free and that's it. So there's no need to pay for anything. You know, this is all free. It's the website where you actually pay for all the subscriptions for watching all the step-by-step um, -step videos and learning how to be a professional modeler. So, um, with that out of the way, next up I've got another video, a, a clip from another video um, that's coming up, which is the uh, rapid video build of the P51D Mustang, which is this one here. It is um, by Tamiya, it's one in 48 scale, and this is a cracking kit. I mean, <clears throat> I'll just show you how far I've got, actually. Um, what I've done so far, I mean, in the videos I've shown you some photo etch with this one, some resin and everything, but when it came around to actually putting this thing together, because it's a rapid video build, I don't show basic stuff, I only show um, fit issues, intermediate stuff, advanced stuff, uh, just so it makes it more fast paced, more rapid, um, so we can get to all the interesting parts. So 
for you guys out there who know uh, you know your way around a model and you know all the basic stuff you're probably kind of clicking fast forward and stuff I think the rapid video builds are pretty good the only problem is with this build is it fitted so together so beautifully so like a glove that I just didn't turn the camera on everything was just basic it just slotted in you just dropped it in and it would fit perfectly bit of glue and that's it it's it's so so easy so good and you know at the same time although it's easy and simple to put together um, you know the details all there to give you a nice professional finish but the advantage is it just means we get to spend more time video in the focus point and what I wanted to do for this one was have a focus point in where we really go um, nuts at looking at doing um, natural metal finishes ie using Alclad 2 paint so um, hopefully you're gonna like this new rapid video build that is um, hopefully gonna be coming out maybe in a week or two's time um, I've already got episode one video so we're all good to um, edit that up and throw it out there and everything um, so hopefully um, you're going to enjoy that so what I'm going to do I'm going to quickly wet your lips for this and I'm going to show you um, a little clip from part one on just doing a bit of photo etch so I hope you'll enjoy this right so what we need to do we need to um, cut off our photo etch part now what I've got here is a nice little um, sort of like cutting mat um, and it's called the photo etch part cutout kit um, I got this from uh, sprumart.co.uk and it's around about the six pound mark and I really think this is a really cool tool because um, let me just kind of show you right if you come along and use a mat um, like this and then cut down on your photo etch part you're probably gonna bend the photo etch because this is Although it's kind of like a hardish surface, I mean it will bend, okay? You want something really nice and hard like this that you get with it. And then what you do, and I'll bring you right in, is what we're going to do, we're going to do our little, um, our little pedals. Now where's it gone? Here we go. Got our little pedals just here. And you're plain and simply, I'm trying to get you on camera nicely, um, put our plastic like handle here and what this will do hold on let's rotate this the other way around here's our part we want to cut out which is our um, pedal and put this plastic kind of like a shield handle on top of our part and we've got to line it up real nice okay so we want to make sure that um, our seat belt here isn't going to bend it isn't going to fly off and get eaten up by the carpet or anything like that um, it's just all nicely protected and it's all lined up where we want to cut the tabs off so tech in I'm using a number nine blade um, and I'm just gonna in kind of like a chopping sort of slicing motion cut off our little tabs right and hopefully they're gone no try that one again nice chopping motion not a sawing or a cutting because if you kind of cut at it you're just going to drag that photo etch part so we don't want to be doing that rotate it right hopefully I'm, I'm trying to kind of get you on camera sorry I'm trying to um, get this so I can do it Again, using our little handle, plastic handle here, we're just shielding it and then we're doing a cutting motion. Sorry, I'm in the way. Nice cutting motion. And then hopefully, no we haven't. Try that again. Okay, nice cutting motion. And hopefully that's got it. No, not quite. Let's try it again line it up nicely and we give it a nice cutting motion yep. hopefully we got that yep we got that all right now we've got our little piece here all right we'll just take that off being careful with it so that nice little mat really does kind of nicely get a little bit of photo etch nicely chopped off but we're probably gonna have um, some little tabs to possibly deal with 
So I'm just getting out my um, file. Any old file will kind of do really. And we just want to get some tweezers. Like so. Now actually, I mean that cutting mat has nicely um, done the job. Now another little tool which is quite cool, um, it's like a little pen, you can get them pretty much from anywhere and what it is is just a little kind of, um, it's like a little pickup thing and what it does is it's kind of like some sort of, um, uh, I don't know, some something on the end that's kind of sticky and you kind of re-water it when it kind of loses its sticky and it comes back again and you can pick up these little parts so what I can do now is just nicely grab the photo etch with our um, tweezers here get it in the position I want it like so and then I can get my little bit of a, a metal file and we can just use in our metal file I mean we only need to do this lightly right we can just nice and lightly get that nicely filed off it didn't really need much to file it off because our nice little cutting mat gets it nice and close um, right to the end of the tab so you don't really have to do much uh, so the next thing we want to do now we want to bend this um, now we could bend it in a lot of ways but what I'm going to use I'm going to use Tamiya's um, photo etch bending pliers um, and what we can do again because it's so hard to pick these up we'll just use our um, little pickup tool here Oop, there we go they are pretty little um, tricky buggers, to be honest, to uh, get the way you want them. It is one of these processes that really does take time. Okay, now what we want to do, we want to get it lined up with where we want to bend. Now there's two bends in this one in particular. So I want to make sure them both lined up. All right. So now I've got that lined up the way I want it. Now with this one, it's quite nice and easy. We can just simply use our fingers to actually bend it to that 90 degree angle. And then there's also another one on top here, which I mean, we could come along with all sorts of tools. I mean, we could come along with another, with our pliers, uh, well, sorry, our tweezers, and maybe just bend it there, 90 degree angle again, like so. Welcome back after that nice little clip of the P51D Mustang. Um, so, what is coming up for April and a little bit into the May? Well, as you already know, you've just watched it, the P51D Mustang. I am going to be finishing building this, spraying this all nice natural metal finish, and those videos are gonna start, I think, next week or two weeks' time. So, <clears throat> you can start watching them. Um, after that, I've also got Another little World War II plane, it's the uh, T TBM3 Avenger by Hobby Boss, 1 in 48 scale. I'm going to do an inbox review, I'm going to do a final conclusion video of this, um, final reveal photos, you know, and you can watch um, some a bit of a photo build on the forum of this. So um, I am looking forward to this kit and I'm going to be starting that one soon, so I hope you're going to like it, which is kind of a good thing actually, because um, as you know, I've just done the uh, Hazago F14 um, Tomcats, and um, <clears throat> the thing is, I've still got to do the F14 Tomcat Boy Hobby Boss. And the thing is, is when you put so much into a kit um, like an F14 to go off and then do a second one straight away, you kind of lose that modeling um, kind of enthusiasm to actually um, build a second one straight after another one. So it's a good idea, for you, even for you guys at home, that you know, if you kind of lose that you know, modeling edge to want to kind of, you know, the enthusiasm of doing it. It's also always a good idea, I like, to just come along and grab a real quick, a real easy kit that you can just bang together, nice quick flow, no messing around with scratch building, filling, major sanding, you can just crack on nicely and build the kit. Um, and it also looks like uh, <coughs> 
Prevenger here is going to be a nice, quick, easy build. Um, it just recharges those modelling batteries so that you can crack on with like the kit you want to do, which requires you know all that kind of extra work of um, you know all sorts of um, uh, like scribing and um, the extra kind of work you put into them with scratch building and all sorts of aftermarket parts you might be messing around with. So um, that is the Avenger. Um, and as I say, I'm gonna be doing the F14, but also I'm gonna do a quick inbox review of our F16 here, limited edition, one in 48 scale. It's Top Falcons by Eddard. And um, I think, I forgot now, it might be, I think it was an Academy F16 where Adelts then come along and slapped in resin, photo etch, and really kind of give it a nice big update, which um, <clears throat> I think it works out that with all the extras that go into this kit, with the resin and stuff and the cost of it, it really turns out to be quite a nice bargain. Uh, a bargain and um, Pete aka Provenance off the forum he donated this kit for me just to do a review and then I can give it him back so we can build it so uh, thanks for that one Pete um, so apart from that um, the last thing is armoured vehicles <clears throat> I'm going to start doing armoured vehicles now at Genesis Models. We're going to start doing it somewhere like the end of April, um, the beginning of May. And, you know, this isn't going to replace aircraft, so, you know, don't worry. What's happening is, basically, we're broadening the um, area in which we build stuff. So it's not going to be aircrafts, World War II, jets. It's going to be now armoured vehicles, aircraft, jets, we're going to be doing it all, showing it to you all, all professionally, and hopefully this first step by step of doing an armoured vehicle is, you know, going to kind of, you know, bring in more people from different areas and not but just be focusing on one area, okay? Um, <clears throat> so hopefully you're going to like that, because even you aircraft guys, I mean, I don't know about you, but I also, I love doing the aircrafts, but... I wouldn't mind having a double armour and I think you know you might want to have a go at it as well as that it's um I find that the um, professional side of doing armoured vehicles kind of teaches you a thing uh, about kind of doing your aircrafts as well I mean this the weathering that goes into armoured vehicles is so massive that you know you can actually take quite a lot from armoured vehicle weathering and throw it over into aircrafts but maybe dull it down a bit um, so that it works on an aircraft so um, hopefully you're gonna like that nice little extra that we're doing at Genesis models now so on the subject of armoured vehicles let's have a look at um, the second stage of weathering a armoured vehicle um, which we're gonna have a look at using pin washes now we're now going to do a, a wash, a wash to highlight all our um, raised areas, recessed areas. And what we're going to do for this, what I like to do anyway, um, is use an oil-based wash. Now, what you simply do, you get these oils by MIG Production and you mix it in with um, these this old odourless turpentine. And you make yourself a coffee kind of... Um, sort of consistency in a nice little pot like so and you've then got yourself a nice basically a pin wash um, give it a shake just to make sure you're more good um, and what we simply do is we get a, a you know an half decent sort of like a size zero size one paintbrush and we simply bring you right in right we simply can come along now and apply this um, to our raised areas, all our detail area, like so. And it's got a nice capillary action to it, so it will um, kind of flow into those recessed areas, flow around your raised areas, as hopefully you're seeing. All right, just like so. Right. And really, I mean, it is as simple as that. It is a little bit time consuming, but you're nicely targeting all those raised areas and recessed areas to start um, kind of highlighting them up to bring out the detail. Now, we just need that to now have a nice bit of a dry um, and we can do something called stubbing.
our um, homemade wash now of um, oil wash has now had time to have a bit of time to dry. I mean, it doesn't have to fully 100% dry, but it needs a bit of time to dry. What we want to do now is we want to get a um, clean um, kitchen paper towel. Right, just on the side because we want to keep our um, wash brush um, nicely clean and tidy because the whole process of stubbing is to in a sense clean the area up and play with it and blend it so using our odorless turpentines turpentine and a um, clean paper towel we just plain and simply load our brush up with some of the turpentine and we don't want it completely loaded so we kind of like um, I'm just off camera here. I'm using this um, kitchen paper towel to just get off some of the turpentine. So we've got a, not an overloaded brush. And then what we would need to do then is we need to get right in and we start to stub the area in which we've um, applied our wash. And this is a case of basically rehydrating and then we come along using the brush to um, stub it down, blend it in. Um, and the kitchen paper towel is so that as you're going along and you're doing a bit of an area, you can then take your paint, uh, your paintbrush and just clean it off on our paper towel like I'm doing off camera um, to keep the brush nice and clean with nice thinners. And hopefully as you can see here, I'm just rehydrating this oil wash right, and it just cleans up and tidies up where we put our wash down and hopefully as you can see all those little mistakes are starting to be cleaned up they're starting to be rehydrated and they're blending back into the model right. so let's speed up the camera so you can see how this is all working Hopefully, as you can see now, I've gone off and I've kind of restubbed, <coughs> sorry, stubbed down all our wash just to have it all nicely blended in and just showing off and highlighting up all our areas of um, detail like raised areas recessed areas and then i've just dried it down a bit just so you can see because um when when kind of oils and paints and stuff are wet you can't really see what it's going to look like when it's finished until it's dried um, so hopefully um, you can see how that has nicely brought out all that detail so the next thing we need to look at now is um, doing something called fading. I hope you like that second layer of weathering of an armoured vehicle which is just building it up and building it up um, and hopefully you're going to really see more of the full picture of weathering um, which Come the May uh, Genesis Models show, we're going to look even more into some more different techniques and layers building this up. So look out for the uh, the show next month, as well as, as I say, we're going to look at some vintage um, airbrushes um, and a few other things, as well as the competition, a new competition, which... Um, as well as we're going to talk about the release of the first step-by-step um, -step video build of doing an armoured vehicle which I'm not going to name the name yet but you know it is I'll, I'll let you know in May uh, Genesis Models show so um, that is it now for April and I hope you've enjoyed the show um, but until next time I'll leave you now with some forum pictures of you know, what the members have done on the forum, just showing you some of their final reveals. So until next time, my name's Bobby Waldron and this is the Genesis Models Show.